Once a year, pilots from Germany show off the unique Schuttglider SG38 glider, which doesn't have a cockpit or canopy. And they do it only during the Mobile Legend Classics Festival and Air Show. It's an absolute pure feeling of gliding compared to modern gliders. And now, legendary aerial modeler John Woodfield has presented a scaled radial controlled model of this similar glider produced in 1931 by the Northrop company in USA. It weighs 1.2 kilograms and everyone can try to fly one of these. Let's glide straight into Season 7, Episode 2 of Air Sports News. I'm your host, Regan Tetlow, and as a bonus, we have a brand new section of the show. Let's get into it. Can't wait to visit Poland once again and to watch and admire the legendary athletes starting in this amazing and most epic gas balloon competition. Each week we're going to showcase the teams that are registered this year. So who will we show first? Well, stay tuned to find out later in the show. So great sporting events are often an opportunity to present not only sporting skills, but also one's beliefs. But if you're going to make a stand, you need to know what you're doing. During the Euro 2020 match between France and Germany on Tuesday, a paraglider with the Green Peace logo on a yellow wing crashed into the pitch. The pilot hit the spider cam cables of the cameras moving over the field. It could easily have cost his life and lives of people in the stadium also. The FAI have announced the Young Artists Contest 2021 winners just a few days ago. This time the main topic was a friendlier world with air sports. In the 35th anniversary edition of the competition, artists from Japan took the top prize in the junior and intermediate categories, with the winner of the seniors coming from the USA. This global connection was reflected in the range of FEI member countries whose artists participated in the 2021 competition. Argentina, Canada, China, Denmark, Finland, Hong Kong, Japan, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Qatar, Russia, Switzerland, United Kingdom and the USA. 15 countries in total. In the junior category, the first place goes to Harutu Harana from Japan. In the intermediate category, Ayo Akira, also from Japan, won. And in the senior category, Amy Lee from the USA prepared the best artwork. Congratulations to you all. My first special guest this week is a retired fireman who now lives in Costa Rica. He's made more than 5,000 jumps, three from balloons and more than 160 base jumps. He's responsible for skydives into some of the most unique locations on the planet, the Blue Hole in Belize just being one of these. He's also a member of the United States Parachute Association and he is the skydiving event organizer. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my very good friend, Rich Grimm. Tell me how it all began, the organising events. You've been jumping for quite a while anyway. How did you get yourself mixed up in all this? Well, it, it's it's kind of funny. As, as all things, it just, it, it happened um, sort of by happenstance, really. I, I went to a boogie in Mexico, had a fabulous time. Um, you know, and I always thought exotic boogies were for people with thousands and thousands of jumps. So finally I had around 2000 jumps. I went to this boogie, had a great time. And I thought, man, that was fun. And I said, I think I could host one of those. So I was in Belize, uh, one of my first big dates with my wife when we were still dating. So I'm gonna impress her and we go to Belize and we got to San Pedro on the island of Ambergus Key. And we look around and it's like, Wow, what a place for a boogie. So this was in 2002. Yeah. And the island was not as, as built up with condos and, and, and homes like it is now. And there was a huge, huge grass landing area. And I, I just looked at it. And I was like, wow, what a place to skydive. I want to try this and see if I can do it. So it took two years and eight trips to Belize and a regime change of the government for him to finally say, okay, 
you guys can you can skydive in Belize. We want you to come. It's going to be great. So the very first boogie was February of 2005. Um, there was 99 people. Uh, you know, nice group. We used the Sun Breeze Hotel on the island, and it was amazing. And so people said, "Look, you have to do this next year." And I'm like, "Man, well, that was a lot of work, but okay." If you want to know more tales from Rich, you can check out the Esports Promotion YouTube channel right after the show, or you can even buy his book as well. We've just received the most epic glider flight of a three-day flying adventure of the German glider, Stefan Langer. This time, the high mountain leg was 850 kilometers long. You feel like a tiny bird in between the huge mountains, passing the Kitzenhorn and Hinterluxter Glacier, two stunning ski areas in Austria. Only with the power of nature, wrote Stefan Langer to his viewers as a description to some absolutely stunning video shots from his glider. No more words are needed, just, just watch this. I will travel by glider more often. It is such a joy to see some other airfields, to see different landscapes and so on. Um, but now um, I will get back home. Limitless Flight Company presents a premiere video of the Pioneer first ever FPV wingsuit simulator. Amazing high-end software is combined with a large virtual reality helmet for gamers. Once you put it on your head, you can jump and fly wherever you want to. With 100% safety, the game called Jump was developed in association with the well-experienced wingsuit jumper and it feels like you're actually flying without leaving your home. Man, I need to try this someday. They can send me one to demo, I'm sure. The Drone Champions League organization presented a very fresh DCL Virtual Drone Grand Prix based on a fictional city called Prop Town in USA. This year the DCL League will combine real drone racing season with real meetings on real tracks with totally virtual tracks like this one. It will be the beginning of the 2021 season for both DCL World Championships and DCL Women's Cup. This is an entirely virtual city created by the DCL game development team based on the architecture of various big cities in the USA. Everything in one place, reachable from every corner of the planet. A ticket for the first suborbital tourist flight of the New Shepard spacecraft was sold at auction on Saturday for $28 million. Reuters report. Billionaire Jeff Bezos, owner of the Blue Origin Company that developed the ship, will also take part in the flight scheduled for July. The name of the auction winner has not been disclosed. It's not me. The telephone auction lasted seven minutes and in its fourth time, the price of the auction ticket exceeded 20 million. Lukas Wojciech, representing the Wrocław Lake Aero Club, has won gold in the 46 Polish Gliding Championships. Winning the competition, Lukas defended the title of master for the third time in a row. He became the Polish champion in the open class. Karol Straszczyk stood on the second step of the podium and Thomas Honig was the third. 24 pilots were on the grid, mostly from Poland, with two from Germany. On Friday, American Airlines and Virgin Atlantic both announced plans to buy billions of dollars worth of urban mobility aircraft from the UK based vertical aerospace. American said it will buy as many as 350 of the company's VA X4 five place tilt rotor aircraft. American is also throwing in $25 million in research money. Virgin wants to buy at least 150 of the aircraft, which vertical says has a top speed of 200 miles per hour and a range of 100 miles. Virgin is sweetening the deal by proposing a joint venture with Vertical to establish an eVTOL network in the UK. Okay, it's time to open up a brand new section in our program. We call it the Gordon Bennett Updates, and each week we'll present different teams from different countries who will participate in this year's competition of the Coupe du Monde Gordon Bennett. Let's start with the Polish team with Matthias Rekas and Jacek Bodanski. I had an in-flight chat with them during their training this week. 
Matthias and Yasik right now at the balloon. Where are you, gentlemen? Hi. Good yeah, morning. we are just just a few kilometers north of Gladbeck, which is, you know, the popular spot for all the gas balloon pilots. I can't tell from here if you are on the ground or in the sky. As you can see. Guys, uh, what a great opportunity for you. Now we're finally going to get Gordon Bennett in Poland again. Yeah, well, uh, it's it's about time, I'd say, <laughs> because yes. we, could, we couldn't make it last year. And uh, in in Poland, it's uh, famous that the history was not so favorable <laughs> for us. So it's it's the first time uh, Gordon Bennett is in Poland for uh, for a very long time. So uh, we're getting prepared for the for this big event. Yeah. Your flight now, how long are you going to be in the air? Two days? Uh, no, we just plan to fly one day, uh, hopefully back uh, back home to Poland, but we'll see about that because the speeds are not so so great. <laughs> what is your altitude right now? Uh, we're at uh, 700 meters. We're slowly going uh, north at 17 kilometers per hour. Uh, our plan is to go above uh, 3000 meters during the day and then in the in the night we'll see. Tell me about the Gordon Bennett going to the country of the winner. Tell me a bit how that works. So so it works like that. The winner gets to organize the event in the next two years. So obviously we won in 2018 and we couldn't organize the event last year since uh, since the polls were supposed to organize the event in 1939, uh, but the Second World War stopped us, and then uh, when the Poles won again after, <clears throat> uh, in the first Gordon Bennett after the war in 1983, uh, well, the mm, situation in Poland, political, Poland, situation, <laughs> political was si situation was uh, very bad. So obviously we also couldn't do it. So we're, we're, I'm we're glad from from what I know it's it's all going well. There has been some you know mm, changes because of the place. Uh, the initial plan with Wrocław didn't really uh, work out, but the organizers managed to find a new good place in Torun, uh, which is also a very beautiful city for the first thing, and also it has uh, a lot of history in the in Polish gas ballooning. Uh, yeah. There was a school of before the war. There was a school uh, of uh, military balloon pilots yeah. uh, in Torun. So there is a traditional yeah. place for this legendary pilot Zbigniew Burzyński used to fly their uh, uh, gas balloons and blimps. On the 13th of June 1962 at Mono Lake, California, Captain Richard H. Cohen set a FEI world record for distance over a closed circuit without landing with a specially prepared Cayman Husky helicopter. With cowlings, doors and unneeded internal equipment removed, including brake lines to the rear wheels, the helicopter had an empty weight of just 5,300 pounds, that's 2,404 kilograms, the total distance flown was 1,055 kilometers. On the 14th of June, 1919, Captain John William Alcock and Lieutenant Arthur Brown, both of the Royal Air Force, crossed the Atlantic Ocean non-stop aboard their twin-engine Vickers Vimy biplane bomber. This was the very first successful non-stop transatlantic crossing by air. Alcock and Brown took off from Leicester's Field, St. John's, Newfoundland, and they flew 1,890 miles to Clifton County, Galway Island. On the 14th of June 1919, Lieutenant Jean-Paul Jérôme Castel took off from France to set the FEI world record for altitude. Flying a Newport de la Chazeur, he reached an altitude of 9,520 meters. At that altitude, he was subjected to temperatures of minus 50 degrees. Castel landed in Villacobli after a flight of approximately two hours. 
On the 15th of June 1928, Imperial Airways Captain Gordor Ollie flew an Armstrong Whitworth aircraft from the city of Glasgow with 18 passengers on board from Croydon to Edinburgh turnout in a race with the London and North Eastern Railways. The Apple Green Steam powered 462 Pacific type locomotive pulled the world's fastest passenger train in express service from London, England to Glasgow, Scotland. That's it for today guys, if you want to contact us you can use all the necessary information displayed right now on the screen. I'm your host Regan Tetlow and as always I'm inviting you here for another episode next week. But until then, stay safe and keep your eyes on the skies.